One of the most misunderstood concepts that I constantly get comments about has to do with something that I said in this video about polyrhythms. Now, my original point was that whenever you're playing a polyrhythm, you have a choice as far as how you want to hear this. Notice how you can kind of drift back and forth between hearing the five as your bass time or hearing the three. But notice how you can't hear both time signatures at the same time. And so my point was, you have to make this distinction. You have to define internally what your time signature is. Are you hearing this as three beats with five notes per beat? Or are you hearing this as five beats with three notes per beat? Now, a lot of people conflated this with something completely different, which was that you can't play two rhythms at the same time, or you can't hear two rhythms at the same time. And that's a completely different conversation. That's a discussion we can definitely have. But as far as time signatures go, that's a decision that you're always gonna have to make. As a performer, you're constantly defining, whether you're aware of it or not, where the one is and where the strong and the weak points are in the measure. So why can't we hear two time signatures at the same time? Isn't it at least theoretically possible that someone somewhere has come up with a way to perceive two meters at once? Well, first, I think we need to define what a time signature really is. A lot of times we think about a time signature as something that you write down. It's something that's defined by the composer in the music that we read. And this is true, but also not the complete story, because a time signature is more than something that you just write down. Really, it's a guide, in most cases, for the performer that lets them know how they're supposed to feel this music. But the interesting thing is that the way that something is notated doesn't necessarily have to correlate with the way that it's perceived by the listener. For instance, I could notate Mary Had a Little Lamb in a number of different time signatures, and this would give a very different appearance on paper, but still have the exact same sound for the listener. So I could notate it in the traditional 4-4 time signature, or I could notate it in 3-4, so we're gonna have three beats per measure instead of four, and that will push all of the notes over into the next measure, and you'll have a different looking piece, but still sounds the same. Now in the same fashion, we could theoretically notate this piece of music in any time signature that we wanted. I could pick something like 17 tuplets and I want this melody, which was playing quarter notes, to now play every 14th, 17 tuplets. and we could still create the exact same musical effect by notating it in a completely different way. Now, it would be possible to hear this Mary Had a Little Lamb in terms of 17 tuplets and really perceive it that way and hitting those melody notes on every X number of those tuplets. That is completely possible if you wanted to do it. Now, I don't know why you would want to do it, but it is theoretically possible. And so this gets to the essence of what a time signature is. A time signature, as I'm speaking about it in this video, is your personal perception as the performer as to how you are perceiving the meter. And that means that you are defining in your mind where the one is, and you're also defining where the strong and the weak beats are in this measure. And so that means that any note that occurs within that space has to either land on a beat or off a beat. This note, in context of a time signature will either be on the beat or off the beat in your mind. It cannot be both at the same time. And so this is something I have a rather uncompromising viewpoint on because as long as you're playing music with a pulse and you're defining that pulse in your own mind, then that's where it is and it can't be somewhere else at the same time. Even if you're playing music without a time signature, because I've heard some people say they'll just play kind of a free form meter with a pulse, say just a quarter note, but there's no real one, well then your time signature is that quarter note pulse. Your time signature is one four. So my point with time signatures is that is something that is defined in the mind of the performer above all. And the performer can only perceive a beat as an on beat or an off beat. And the performer can only perceive something as the one or not the one. And so in my eyes, that makes this very, very clear that we cannot 
literally hear two time signatures at the same time in this sense. Now it's completely possible that you could have two or more musicians in the same group that are hearing different time signatures at the same time. But each musician, again, is only hearing one time signature. So you might have the guitarist really hearing 7-8 and the drummer hearing 4-4. Four, four. But again, each one of those musicians is only perceiving one time signature at the same time. So in my eyes, this time signature issue is very clear. I don't see any way that a single person can hear more than one time signature at the same time and truly perceive that as their pulse. Now, the thing I get comments about is something completely different, which is this question of, can we hear two rhythms at the same time? So once we've defined our time signature, we can have lots of different rhythmic stuff happening within that time signature. And so the question is, can we truly perceive all of those things as independent rhythms and independently monitor them? Or is our mind just kind of gluing it all together into a composite rhythm, which is what I spoke about in the polyrhythm video. And so the question that deserves a little bit more attention is once we've defined our time signature, can we actually hear multiple different rhythms at the same time and actually truly independently monitor those as two separate things? And here is where the answer gets a little bit less clear. Now, as a drummer, I would say that for me, most of the time, in fact, probably 99% of the time, the answer is no. I'm hearing almost all the time everything that I'm playing as a single sort of stream of events. In other words, when my two hands hit together at the same time, that's not two events happening. That's a single event. It's a unison hit. And so in this same way, I'm always aware of the interaction and the connection between all the things that I'm playing between my hands and my feet. I know when my right hand and my left foot are landing together in unison, and I know when they're not. And so for me, the way that I am able to play any kind of coordination thing is not by thinking of them as separate things, but rather by observing the pattern as a whole. Now there is a 1% of odd cases where that's perhaps not how I'm actually perceiving things, but I would say the vast majority of the time, I'm hearing all of these different seemingly independent rhythms as a single composite rhythm. Now I knew that this was a potentially confusing distinction to make, that is the difference between hearing two rhythms at the same time and hearing two time signatures, because those are not the same things. And so I even tried in the video to clear that up. But notice how you can't hear both time signatures at the same time. Now of course we can hear both rhythms at the same time, but that still didn't stop people from writing me saying, well, of course you can hear two different rhythms at the same time and look at all of these different examples, why? So most of the comments I've gotten related to this have to do with this fundamental point of confusion between hearing two time signatures at the same time and hearing two rhythms. But I did wanna cover my basis for this video and challenge any assumptions I might've had. And so one area that I thought would be interesting to look at would be polytempo or music that uses two tempos at the same time. And my friend Brian Kroc happens to know quite a lot about polytempo. And I caught up with him to get his take on this phenomenon. I'm so glad you're doing this video because as I've looked at other videos on YouTube about the, the topic of polyrhythm and polymeter, I think that there's a ton of confusion. In terms of polymeter, there's so much at play. First of all, there's social conditioning, mm. which means to me that like as Western American people, we listen to music from a drum centric place. Mm. And so I automatically thought about the fact that you're a drummer and how that would definitely affect your perception of polymeters. And it definitely affects mine too. So if you're listening to a Meshuggah groove, like I was listening to Bleed. Of course, you're gonna always lock in to the drums because we've been trained over our whole lives unconsciously to focus on the drums. And so like with Bleed, it's in four, but there's other things being implied. So you can decide to focus in on the less obvious parts of the polymeter. Basically, essentially, I don't think you can hear two meters at one time. Yeah. And the way I sort of think about it is, is like the depth of field and mm. the way you focus your eyes. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're looking at a frame, you're seeing so many levels. You're seeing the foreground, the background, mm -hmm. the midground. You're seeing all of those things at once, 
but your eyes can only focus on one part of the depth of field. You can refocus, and everybody knows that feeling of, you know, if you hold your hand in front of you and then you focus on the trees that are 20 yards away from you and that feeling of refocusing your eyes, I think you can do that with your ears, definitely. So what about polytempo? How does that fit into this whole equation? If your question is, can you hear two tempos at once? Yeah. I don't know. I think it, you know, when I listen to my own uses of polytempo and my own music, I am more enjoying that dissonance. Like I'm, right. to me, it's like a really complex emotion. It's almost just like when you hear a really dissonant chord, like, you know, if you hear a C sharp major triad on top of a C major triad, I don't think you're hearing it as two different things. You're just hearing it as mm. a really dissonant thing. So I think you're hearing one conglomerate, but you're not, I don't know if you're able to distinguish. Again, it, it comes back to the depth of field analogy. Right. I don't think totally. you're able to distinguish those things, but you are able to notice that it's all there, but you still have to choose something to focus on. If you'd like to learn more about Polytempo, definitely check out Brian's video linked below. Also, our entire conversation is available on my Patreon. We talked about a lot of really interesting stuff. At this point in the video, I thought it would be fun and only fair to turn the conversation to you and hear some of your comments that you sent me about hearing multiple time signatures or rhythms at the same time. So we're gonna listen to some of these musical examples and address these one by one. Here we go. Okay, this first comment comes from Nathan, and he says, I'm really excited to share that in my studies of Moroccan rhythms, it is actually possible to feel two rhythms simultaneously. I believe it is very pervasive in Moroccan music, both where they feel the one in multiple places simultaneously, and where 12 8 polyrhythms are felt with multiple simultaneous pulses. Check this one out, and you might hear what I mean. So first of all, I really, really love this. Musically, this is amazing, and I'm so glad you sent this to me. So I really, really like this on a musical level. There's definitely a lot of different rhythms and pulses happening within this music. There's no question about that. There's lots of polyrhythmic stuff happening. You could definitely hear this in many different time signatures, but only one at a time. So when I listen to this, I can hear it in a number of different ways. So we can hear the kind of 12-8 feel, which is kind of a triplet feel. Or I could hear it as this kind of a 6-8, where I'm dividing the beat into groups of two instead of groups of three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or I could hear it in terms of maybe three, four. So I'm gonna hear pulses like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. Another element I hear in this music is these claps, which are happening on on the third triplet. I could see it being completely possible that the people playing or clapping those notes are actually perceiving those as downbeats. And so their whole perception of where the downbeat is could be shifted over by a note. I don't see any problem with that, and I think that's completely possible too. But again, the point is, then that's where their one is, and it's not in the other place, and it can't be both places at the same time for an individual person. And so in this case, I have to still say that you can only hear one time signature at once. But in any case, really beautiful musical example, really cool stuff, so thank you for sending it my way. All right, this next one comes from Parity Violation who says that I think some patterns can be learned without thinking in composite rhythms. As a teenager, I played Chopin's Fantasy Impromptu number 66, where you have to play 16th notes on top of triplet eighth notes. Um, okay, so I don't know this piece, but let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, this is a great example. I'm really glad you brought this up. And this might fall into that 1% of cases that I spoke about before. Now what's happening here is the left hand is playing triplets, da -da 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 -da, 
and the right hand is playing 16th notes on top of that. So what we have here is a case where the tempo is way too fast to actually hear the composite rhythm that's being produced by the three against the four. So what happens in these cases is that you do, in a way, have two independent rhythms happening. Now, I've run into this um, in some extreme cases on the drums, and that's where I want to play something like a five against a seven, like with my hands against my feet. And so in this case, you might be able to say that you're hearing two independent rhythms at the same time. Um, I would note that my focus, my mental focus, is primarily concentrated on one of those subdivisions, and then I'm using my other senses besides my hearing to kind of line up the other notes. So I'm kind of listening to one rhythm and looking at another or feeling the other. So maybe we can hear two different rhythms at the same time, but not two time signatures. My whole point that I want you to take away from this video is that a time signature is something that the performer determines themselves. It's something they define in their mind and you decide where you hear one and therefore you know whether those notes that you're playing are landing on one or not. And so in the end, the reason I find this discussion to be important is not that it affects the listener that much because music is a subjective art form and everyone is welcome to listen to music in the way that they choose. However, where it is important is for the performer because your perception of the music affects how you're gonna play your instrument. And if you approach a polyrhythm or a coordination thing on your instrument, thinking that you have to think about all of these different things at the same time, I think that that's unproductive and unhelpful in most cases. And in most cases, you would be better off focusing on how all of those parts fit together. And so really, this is a much bigger discussion than how do we perceive time signatures, which is interesting on its own, but really this is talking about how do we best approach playing our instrument and how do we get as good at it as we can so that we can express the ideas that we want to. And so in that sense, I think it's really important to look at our own perceptions because that affects the way that you're gonna interact and interface with your instrument. If you wanna to listen to the full interview I did with Brian, that's available on my Patreon. We talked about a lot of really interesting stuff beyond just polymeter. I wanna thank my patrons for supporting this video and all of my videos. And last but not least, thank you for watching.